Christina. Christina. Hello. Spirit tonight rose a melody faded and song in celestial light straining unceasingly from oh my soul like a definite Los Angeles Cantonese Seventh-day Adventist Church. At the beginning of our worship service, I would like to make a few announcements as our deaconess collects the offering. The April Church Board Meeting will be held next week at 3 p.m. in person and via Zoom. Alhambra SDA Church will host a mental health, understanding depression and anxiety seminar on Sunday, April 21st at 10 a.m. The speaker is Dr. Alex Ayang, a psychologist at the University of Southern California. Brown's Brothers Gospel Music Concert will be held on April 27 at 11 a.m. St. Gabriel Academy Spring Festival will be held on Sunday, April 28, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at their campus at 8827 East Broadway, St. Gabriel. Now we would like to invite Samantha to do the opening prayer and scripture reading. 
If you're able to, please kneel. Dear Heavenly Father, keep us safely here today. We are grateful for your protection throughout the week. We ask your Holy Spirit to be with us as we listen to your word. Please bless Uncle Peter and speak to us through him. In your name we pray, amen. Today's scripture reading is found in John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Thank you, Samantha. Today we are very pleased to have Elder Peter Young to present the sermon. Happy Sabbath. Only are three people. Let's try that again. Happy Sabbath. That's better. There you go. Thank you. Um, if you weren't here earlier, Pastor Fu was here, and um, it's hard to not let him continue because I haven't heard him for so many years. He's he's a good friend. He. Um, kind of saw me born. Student in Clearwater Bay, and then, and then um, he was the first graduate of the theology program at Clearwater Bay, 1966, I think. So I was born a few years before that, so he came in the same time I was born. And then he became my Bible teacher, and then our pastor. So it's like I've been him, know him all my life, so it's kind of hard not to let him continue, <laughs> especially, thank you, especially he's come so far from Boston, but it was good to listen to him. Um, let's go ahead and start prayer first, and then I'll share something on my, in my heart. Father, we thank you so much for your love. We ask you to be with us, help us to have a good study in thy words and continue to give, give each one of us the gift that you promise. I pray in your name. Amen. Peace that passes all understanding. How many history buffs are some of you that are old enough? I don't know if you remember this date. This is 1945, August 9. Particularly the time is 11.02. Any history buffs? That was the moment that the second atomic bomb landed on Nagasaki and killed 70 some thousand people. You see the clock did, the clock actually stopped. That was the picture. We were in Japan for, for two weeks, well, a week and a half and so, and so some of my talk today is kind of merging in the whole thing and some of the stuff I've, I've learned through the time and so I would share with you some of the things and adding on to the stories we have here. So that year ended the World War II with two atomic bombs, one in Hiroshima, one in Nagasaki, um, and basically destroyed two cities and killed over 200 some thousand people. And this was the, can you see that? Ooh. Got to turn off the lights there so you could see the, there you go. No, the, the lights on the screen. I think two, two lights here can. So this is a picture of the mushroom cloud that landed. So the, 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 the bomb actually exploded about 500 feet above the city. And the radiation of the atomic, there you go, can you see that better? So the radiation basically once goes down there and kills everybody around that, that whole spread area. And the one on the left side is the chapel that was destroyed. And the right side is the Hiroshima. That one's not my picture. The one on the right side is not my picture. The left one is my picture. Um, so the, the famous Hiroshima one. In the museum we saw were a lot of artifacts. These were two artifacts that really I could show that didn't gross you out, but it, it shocks me too. 
on the the magnitude of the the bomb. The one on the top, it's a lunchbox of a child or a person. And if you look closely, you could go online and see the same picture. Um, this is why my I took um, rice charred inside a metal box. The bottom one is a glass bottle that they basically melted in the presence of the bomb. We got to the Peach Peace Park there, and it was raining quite a lot, because even we had the ponchos on, and the Peace Park is a beautiful park, and of course, um, Hiroshima has one, Akasaki has one. October the same year, the world organized United Nations. And what was the purpose of the United Nations? Was to establish, to attempt to maintain international peace. Maintain, that was the primary purpose of the United Nations, was to maintain international peace. Of course, other stuff, right? How is the United Nations doing? This is a graph from 1816 to 2007, and the lines there are all the wars that happened in this history of 100, almost 200 years. And that arrow down is where the United Nations started. <laughs> so, so you can see that United Nations seemed like started more wars than, than peace, right? So how are they doing? Uh, I'm not sure. How about Another type of piece that we talk about is the interpersonal relationship. You can see the four pictures there. There's a church with two ladies fighting, school bullying, home issues, and work issues. There's probably a lot more other issues. Look at this. Marriage and divorce in America. You can see a little slope of divorces go down, but there's more people get not getting married. So maybe the divorces is related to less marriage, so less divorces. Um, so divorces, we know that there's a inter, most of the time is interpersonal relationship issues. I think all the time it is. Um, interpersonal relationship that cause the breakup of relationships. And so we can see that. And of course, Crime scenes we see and incarcerations of, of Americans. Look at that. It grew from 1980 all the way up. And we're trying to have peace, continue to have peace. Homicides, oh, 1900, right? 1900 to 20 years ago, 24 years ago. It went up and went down. The ones down at the bottom there is basically 19, 1944 to 86, probably right after the war, right? There's enough homicide or killing during the wartime. Of course, that wasn't counting in there. So how, how are humans doing in finding interpersonal relationships? I don't think so. And so what do people do? People find ways to get out and find peace, right? You go out and do times, and you can see that extreme sport of people actually camping on the, on the cliffs, flying, and trying to find that serenity, and just, and, or virtual reality, or go to the beach, and things like that. So, one of the things that's really, really popular in Japan is the onsens, the, the hot streams, and I think Howard been to a few of those before. And, and this is one of the ways that Japanese do it, right? So we went there and we had uh, an hour of quietness, just two of us. Another thing that they also do is go to the shrine in the in an island um, off the coast of Hiroshima and go to the shrine that is Miyajima. And there's a famous, famous bridge there that you can see. Um, the day we were there, the picture on the top of the, we were just actually at the, at the bridge, at the gate there, the Tori. Um, and it's huge, 6 to 80 feet tall, and people go there um, just to have some peace. 
find inner peace. However, it doesn't happen all the time. You get come home and you get all hell's loop make break loose. And this is a, a place in the same place as onsen. It's baby will have eight different locations of hot streams, hop streams, um, and so they call it eight hells. So I came back from hell in some ways. <laughs> And what do you do? You come back to reality and you have all these other things happening, right? Traffic, you get a pile of laundry, you get a pile of stuff in the office, um, work and relationship, people don't think, and you know, all these things happening. More than that, you have, you have diseases, you have confusion, you have things, and you have debt. Some of you still have school debts, right? Student loans. And then more and more we have people today having these mental health issues. And look at this, this graph on mental health. It's going up, of course, after COVID, everything has gone going up. And the purple line there is the, the top one's mental health on the top of the 53% of Americans find that they need mental health issues. Percentage of population depression, look at that. Young people, your age group, okay? Maybe you guys getting older. But they're, they're the, the young people are having depression. So what is peace? Do we find peace? So on the boat, we had eight people. So we, we talked on Sabbath afternoon. We sat there and we talked. And these are some of the responses of what peace was. One must have acceptance. Peace is costly. No cheap peace. Peace is is a conflict of resolution. One must desire peace. Does a place have no war has peace? Reconciliation forever, surprises from heaven. These are the kind of points we talked about. And you really, if you don't want to dig into that, you could dig into all day long on these, these points. And, and it's so true. And in the scriptures, basically Old and New Testament have two different words. Shalom and, and Rini, I think that's how you say it. And definition is peace, tranquility, serenity, and the abundance of peace that brings. The abundance which peace brings. And what I want to bring to your attention is the, the, the famous scripture, a chapter in Philippians chapter 4. Little back story of Philippians. If you are not so familiar with it, Philippi was the first city that Paul visited on his second journey. He was, that's part of the Macedonian peninsula there. And Philippi was the eastern, kind of the capital for the Roman Empire. So Philippi is very much like Rome. We can see they have columns, they have different things. And you could, if you want to get into more detail on it, we could read um, in Acts 16 the story of what Paul did. And we remember Paul on the Sabbath day with their companions, Silas, um, Timothy, and, and Luke, they went to worship. But where did they go? They did not go to a synagogue, they went down to the river. And they found women there, a bunch of women. And so in the Jewish law, if you don't have more than 10 male, you cannot have a synagogue. And so it seems like the Jewish community in Philippi wasn't really going to church, so to say. But the women are the ones that were more religious. And so they could not have a synagogue by themselves. So they actually end up worshiping by the riverside. And the famous person, Lydia, was the first European Jewish woman that got baptized. And she was a rich one that, that had the, the purple trading and things. And they were the ones that started the church. They were the ones that built Philippi, the church of Philippi. If you read the whole chapter of Philippi, and I went through the chapter went through the book of Cha, book of Philippi about three times this week. A simple four chapter reading. Philippi is the 
crown jewel of Paul's ministry. He talks about it in verse 1 in chapter 4. The crown jewel. In other words, the price. The biggest the price of all his ministry was Philippi. He loved the church so much. And, but there were disagreements in the church. And so for three chapters, he talked about different things. And when he came to the fourth chapter, wow. If you really read in there, let's go to chapter four, if you have your Bibles, um, and verse two. And I'm going to build this up into how do we get peace. First thing he talked about was how to live in harmony. Two ladies, Euodia and Syndicate. And he said that, I urge you, Eudolia, I urge Syndicate. He didn't say Eudolia and Syndicate. He said, he said, I urge Eudolia and I urge Syndicate. See, in other words, both of them are equal to live in harmony in God. So if you read, think, you think through that, why is Paul bringing this up? It's like, remember, this, this, this letter is read in church. <laughs> you think about it. You get an elder up there or the, the synagogue, the person, start reading, 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 and suddenly, my, who, what happened here? The whole church knows about these two conflicts. And, and you read on, these two ladies most likely were also the same ladies that were at the riverside to begin the church. So they're not stranger, they're matriarchs of the church. And they have some agreement and disagreement. And you know that this agreement wasn't on theology. Because if it was on theology, Paul would have pointed it out in different, in different writings of Paul. He actually pointed out different theology problems, and he said, this is, no, we, we need to face it, focus, focus on God. And so it wasn't about theology. It wasn't lifestyle, because Paul talks about lifestyle, how we live. I would think, let me suggest that it could be petty. Something petty. Or something like potluck food. Or maybe how the piano is supposed to be placed. Or the sequence of how church program is supposed to be at. Or this member is late. We shouldn't put him on the stage because he's late. Um, all these little petty things that, that, that has created a conflict between these two leaders in the church. And how often that happens in our churches that we get into such petty little things that we forgot about the bigger picture of harmony in Christ. He didn't say have just harmony, work out your differences. He said harmony in the Lord. In other words, have the mind of Christ to work together in the same goal and not have your differences. Then he goes on to the second level. He says, now, in order to have peace, you also need to work together with each other. And the, in the verse here, Nick, verse, oh, it's blocked out. Sorry, sorry somehow. So indeed, true compassion. He talked about all the people now. I ask you also to help these women who have shared my struggles in the cause of the gospel together with Clement. We don't know who Clement was. Evidently, he was a, a, quite a pronounced person as well as the rest of the fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So in other words, work together to make things work. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to come back, I think I'll come back to whose name's in the book of life. That's heavy duty thing. So I'll come back to that one. So work together. So as a church, we need to work together to make things right for everybody. Don't get into petty things. Number three is rejoice in the Lord always. We know that. The song, right? Rejoice in the Lord always. That's the thing that we talked about all the time. And we know that because Paul it was the same place he was in prison. We know the story. Remember the story? He was in prison. He's whipped. And at that night, the earthquake came. That was in Philippi. Okay? So the members knew that he, he sang through the night. And at the same time, if you read chapter 1, 
he was bonded in chains in Rome writing this letter to the Philippi's. He still people said, rejoice in the Lord. And so the book of Philippi, the, the, piece, the epistles that Paul write, written to the church was that rejoice in the Lord, always rejoice. And how often do we not rejoice? How often do you get into troubles and say, oh, shoot. And, and, then, and then you get into your, your whole thinking and get into a point where you, you forget about rejoice in the Lord. Rejoicing in the Lord. And he repeat that. And again, I say rejoice. In other words, this is so important. Let's, let's underscore it. Let's put a wrap around it. Let's highlight it. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. As Christians, if we don't rejoice, then why are we Christians? Right? If people cannot tell that you are a Christian, just the way you perform, and you have to tell people, I go to church, oh, you're a Christian, then it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, one time I was, was in a, a party, New Year's party, among um, dentists, I believe, a long time ago. And um, we were having some drinks and things, and, and and then I introduced myself working at, this is back that time, we were working at Hong Kong Avenue Hospital. Oh, okay, this and that. And, and then there was a, a cup of wine there, and I just sipped one, just try it out. The guy next to me said, hey, I, don't, I thought you don't drink. <laughs> so <laughs> that kind of changed my viewpoint of whether drinking is right or not. Okay. It's how people view you as a person. If you have a label of being a Christian, what do you do as a Christian? Do we, do we just walk around our lives and just come to church on Sabbath? And that's our Christian day? And the rest of the week, we're not Christians? So I heard one speaker said, we're a seven-day Adventist, not seventh day. So we don't practice Adventism or Christianity for six days, we come to church for that three hours and we go home, we do everything else. So this is something that really speaks heavy to me in terms of my work too, right? Next one is gentle spirit. So let your gentle spirit be known to all people. And who's the person that we think about first about gentle spirit is Christ. Look at what he did to the, to the leopards, to Zacchaeus, to the woman that was a, a, a accused of adultery. The empathy he showed, the gentle mind of Christ. How many times do we emulate Christ in having that gentle mind? How, how often do we care for people we don't know? Or come people come to potluck? Can they just come to potluck and not come to church services? Sure, Exactly. But some people don't like that. I remember there was a church member that was so upset because a, a lady, a somebody, a homeless person came to church, just want food. And they don't want him to tell, that person did not come to church, they just came for food. It's totally fine. If that's the way to get in there. And, and then Mrs. Fu, I'm only Mrs. Fu back in, back in LA Chinese, she, was, she, was, she had a gentle heart on her ministry on Sunday. She had a lot of activities going on, on Sunday. And some of us, including myself, were upset because we weren't charging people for coming to church and learning Tai Chi and doing different things. And, and Mrs. Fu said, at least they come to church. Whether Sunday or not, they have an opening to church, and maybe that will open up their hearts or something. So sometimes we really need to think of the purpose. What is our mind? What is the reason why we do certain things? Have the gentle mind of Christ. Christ never preached to these people, right? He did not, you read the scripture, he not, did not preach to them. He preached Sermon on the Mount and a few other ones, but he never preached to them. The fifth step is don't be anxious. And we all know this. And the famous Disney, right? Hakuna Tatara, right? That's the thing that's like, don't worry about tomorrow. And we all know that also in Matthew it talks about that, right? In, in, 
in why are we worrying about things that God took care of the sparrow, God took care of the lilies. Therefore, don't worry. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink or wear. For all these things in Gentiles, these are the things that Gentiles seek or, or non-believers seek, right? For the Father in heaven knows all your needs. All you need to do is seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be given to you. So, a, a, Japan is full of castles. This is a Okaso castle, which is built in the 1500s. And one of the things that were, were well known to the castle was that the people that live around there feel like, because I have a castle here, because I have a, a place that's safe, I don't have to worry because my, my warlord's going to take care of me. Okay, this is during the shogun time. How about us? Paul talks about it. Again, our names are written in the book of life. Okay, don't have any question. The fact that you're coming to worship, your name, your very name, my name is written in the book of life. And Paul talks about this. And we travel, we travel with passports, right? And in chapter 3, he talks about you're the citizen of heaven. Your name is written on the book of life. You don't have to earn that. That was a gift to you. Now, do we live like that we are citizens of heaven? Do we, or we live like, oh, I'm not sure, I don't want to hide my passport, Right? Um, I've, in my lifetime, I have th three different passports. The first one, I had a, a British passport for, for BNO, okay, British Overseas. We call a third-class <laughs> passport. Some of you from Hong Kong even understand what I'm talking about. We don't have the right to go to England. We just have a pass passport for traveling. <laughs> so I have, the, and then, and then, then, um, we came here, I got my passport to the United States. So I'm a citizen in America. Then one time I went back to Hong Kong to visit. My mom uncle said, hey, why don't you get a Chinese passport? So I went down there, I got my Chinese passport. So I had a Chinese passport too. So Because sometimes you could travel around the world better with a Chinese passport than an American passport. Because sometimes China takes care of, like, especially in Africa. If you travel in Africa, you use a Chinese passport better than using American passport. And so... We proudly present our passports, but how often do we proudly present our passport of heaven? And each one of you have that. Your name is written. How often do we live that way as citizens of heaven? How often do we claim to be children of God? Um, recently, I, I, um, well, last week, uh, we watched the movie called The Scope. I know you haven't seen that movie. It's about... Prince Andrews got into trouble um, with a fair um, hooked up with, with Epstein, James Epstein. You know who James Epstein was? Okay, he had this island, private island, and somebody caught a picture with um, Prince Andrews, James Epstein, walking in the park, Central Park. And there were histories and histories of Andrew, Prince Andrew going to his home and going to the, to the island. He denied the BC, BCC, even interviewed him. He denied it in front of TV. Um, and then later on, he resented that. And the queen had to strip him of all his public duties. But did he not become a prince? He's still Prince Andrew. He's still the son of the queen. He's still the brother of the king now. His position as a prince doesn't change. So like the two ladies, they have arguments, but their names are written in the book of life. As long as we live here on earth, we're going to have some argument. We're going to have some conflicts. But that doesn't take your name out of the book of life. And that's the key thing that we need to know. Because if you have the name book of life 
your name is in the book of life, if you have the passport to heaven, what do you really have to worry about? In the fourth step, he said, always pray with thanksgiving. Right? But in everything, by prayer and pleading, or supplication, with the thanksgiving, and let your request be known to God. God is bigger than you think it is, but he also takes care of the smallest thing that each one of us have. It could be an ingrown toenail that's hurting, that you think is too much for God, but God cares about those things. And we, we see that in Paul's writing again in chapter 1, he talks about the thanksgiving of how he loved the church and how he th is thankful for the church, even though he, in, he was in chain. And by doing all these things, now we could claim the ultimate peace, the peace that passes understanding, the peace that is in your heart, that guards your heart and your mind in Christ. And that's why Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. We all know that text, right? That's in chapter, it's the same chapter in 13. Why? Because he had this peace. Because he had harmony. Because he's willing to rejoice in the Lord always. He doesn't have to worry about things. So Sabbath morning got out of the boat. And there she was. Can you see that? In the background? 20% of the time that we could only, in Japan, you could only see Fuji, Mount Fuji. And there she was, right off the boat in the morning. Clear not a cloud in the sky. And as we look at this, I'm not sure if this works or not. There you go. So when we have the peace, we like going up to that mountain. Because Mount Fuji, the word Mount Fuji is abundance. The mount of abundance. The abundance of peace that God will provide for each one of us. And the moment I saw that the mountain, Mount Fuji, this text came to mind. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who makes the heaven and the earth. Hopefully you, you see that in that. And this is, this is not my picture. This is a picture, I think it's a drawing. looks like a drawing from the top of Mount Fuji looking down. Probably a sunrise or sunset picture. Or have you gone up to Mount Wilson and looking down onto LA, the basin. And the peace you get up top when you look down. You don't hear the sirens. You don't hear the people fighting. You don't hear the honking. You don't hear the traffic. You just see the beautiful lights. You see the peacefulness of it. And so Paul says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything's of excellence or praiseworthy, think of these things. He, he didn't say do these things. He didn't think of these things. He's really getting into our mind. He's being really t intimate because no one can reach your mind. He's like, think about these things. Whatever you have learned and received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the, pea, and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace with you will be with you. Now, if you look at these, these things and take away the things, I'm just going to bring it well, the true, the noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellence, praiseworthy, peace of God. What does that say to you? What are you thinking about when you think about these things? I hope you're thinking about the Prince of Peace because these are his characters. These are exactly his characters that was portrayed in the gospel. So you don't have to think about all these lists of things. Just think of Christ. Have the mind of Christ means you think of Christ, what he gives. And when Christ says, I leave you a gift, a peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give you, the world cannot give. So don't be troubled and afraid. Christ says, I will come and be with you. And of course, we know that the peace that he gave on the cross 
right? The peace that he did for interpersonal, Christ made the peace between Jews and Gentiles. In other words, between humans, okay? So they don't break down in the hatred, okay? Or cast your cares, the peace that you could just give God cares. He'll take care of you. Or in Isaiah says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on me, the mind of Christ, because he trusted me. Jesus is a peace that passes all understanding. Our peace. And the song we sang earlier is exactly what it says. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the heaven above. That's the peace. It's Christ that comes. And hopefully, as we continue to read and learn more of what God's peace is, because that's the peace that God came down for. And incidentally, it's very interesting, I want to finish this, this point here, is that Jesus never said, for the three and a half years in ministry, he never said peace to you until he met the disciples in the upper room after his resurrection. Why is that? Because he have accomplished all the conflicts on earth. He already has the peace. So peace to you, my peace to you. And that peace is what God has offered to each one of us. It's you to be in peace with him, in peace with other people. And pray that each one of us will have this peace in heaven. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful message of the peace. And thank you for being our peace, the Prince of Peace that came down and offer peace to each one of us. May we claim this peace. May we have this desire to accept this peace and accept it so that we can have peace, our inner peace, our peace with friends and among men. The only way we could see that eventually we will have world peace that you already promised that that one day there'll be no more crying, no more tears, and that day will come that we live for, that the peace will be here. Thank you for your love. I pray in your name. Amen. <clears throat>
Please be seated. You could pray silently as we close.